Are you ready to win? Certainly the man with the momentum in 2018. Langbad already closing that gap. Hell yeah, you are. The podium champagne, the adoring fans, all the social media feels. But are you willing to make the sacrifices? Take all the risks. Oh, going down hard. Deliver the right effort on the right day. In reality, the question isn't, are you ready for victory? It's, are you committed enough? You know I run the streets, live a fast life, you know what it's gonna be. Ride and get my mind. Always keep it cheap, you know I run the streets, live a fast life. I really enjoy it when the cross-country and downhill races are combined. Four times a season, the downhill and cross-country worlds come together in a mashup of raw speed and cultivated endurance. This is the story of the first of these occasions. Mutual appreciation between downhill racing and cross-country racing. We are scared what they do, and I think they are scared what we do in a certain way. It's also cool to see that downhill guys and girls, they are coming to cheer for us. That's, uh, that's really great and I appreciate that. Val de Sol is a brutal track. Pretty long, super rough and really technical. I think that every year it brings out a crazy run out of somebody and everybody, somebody will get super loose but put down a super good time. The gnarliest track, without a doubt, I would say, is Val de Sole. You can't believe how steep it is. There's no grip, blind drops all over it. And if you do get something wrong there, you're not going to save it because it's too steep to stop. People always think we, don't, we never touch the brake, and that's fully fake. We are good because we know how to use the brake. Having good braking points is just something that you develop after hitting corner after corner after corner. It's probably the most important part of mountain biking. People usually don't associate braking with going fast, but I, th I definitely do. I'd say I brake more than most people. Brake early and let off early. Keep the overall kind of flow and speed. Hang on. That short, seemingly disposable little soundbite from Mr. Shaw is worth a second listen. I'd say I brake more than most people. Brake early and let off early. Keep the overall kind of flow and speed. In Val de Sol, it's such a hard track to be able to pick lines. Just because there's so many options and you're like, what do I do? One of the tricky things about line choice is... It's a tricky one. Oh! Shit. If I was trying to distill it down into a formula, I would say... The most direct, most supportive, smoothest line, which allows you to maintain speed, which sounds really simple, but tracks change, tracks move. What is supportive isn't the next run. So the rule is constantly shifting and adapting. That is what I go for when I'm trying to pick lines, and that is what I've seen works. Woo -hoo -hoo -hoo! Yes! Waiting for the gap. Ben. Yup. I need to talk to you. Every time here, I don't get the flow, you know? It's mm -hmm. dangerous. I think you can get it good. I've seen a few people do what you did, like gap across. Yeah, but I hit my foot on the rock. Yeah. Need to just, need to like go a little deeper. But what do you, how would you get there? Because normally you can just go over the sump. <laughs> Yeah. The noise thing, or making noises when we're walking track or explaining what we're riding, I've kind of got it from Loic and Morris. When we're describing a section of the course, it'd be like, wah, bah, 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 bah. or like, wah, doo, 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 doo. and uh, <laughs> you know, if it's rainy, it's like, <laughs> but if it's dry, it's uh, dry noise. Ping, ping. Like noise without saliva. <laughs> and then this one. And then, you can explain it way better by making noises. The poof is not as hard, like poof, 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 poof. Right. But it's a bit scary. OK, this is hard. This track is fucking hard. My approach today was a little bit different to 
the beginning of the season. At all the races, I felt really good in practice and like doing something in practice and then doing it in the race is a completely different scenario. Just because there's pressure, there's more cameras, there's more people. The pace has been there, getting to the bottom hasn't always been. Fastest through the steep parts of the course, second in both the technical and the corners yesterday out of all the qualifiers. And you know this man is hungry for a big result. At the previous races, I had been more focused on my results and just trying to win. And I think today, I was more focused on riding my bike and riding it well. It's going to go outside that time with a stack. Isles goes 2.2 back. I wasn't exactly expecting a top 10, so that was a pretty good surprise. And I think that I can just, you know, step it up from now on. Sometimes I've been in kind of prime shape, but just kind of not willing to find that edge on the day. It's important to remember that sometimes it's just not the weekend that you can get into that zone. Virgio goes down at the very top of the track. Yeah, it's, it's funny, isn't it? Because it's something no one ever speaks about, and it's so relevant. Bruni ahead at the moment, then. Oh, and he goes down. He just loses it there. Just remember, <laughs> you're not a robot. Yeah. Laurie Greenland. Whoa! Big kick coming in there. If I have a good run, I can remember the start and the finish. Everything else is a bit blurry. Greenland then, really on the move here. Pulls another second out. He comes down towards the line. Laurie Greenland sprints. Greenland takes the lead. 1.9 up at 337.3. Something happens in, in our sport where if somebody clicks in their head, and figures it out, it's it's hard to stop them. We've seen it countless times of people kind of getting that edge, getting that confidence and really just riding it. And I think that Amari's really stepped up into that spot. Back to back World Cup wins for Amari Piron. The man of the moment. Amari Piron going to try and win his third World Cup in a row. Here he comes in through the split, and he is behind. He's less than a second behind, though. Different line there, didn't jump over everything, just stayed a bit tighter. Can he pull that time back? It's definitely possible. Second year a year ago. Gets right back across the track there to give him a line, and it goes green for Avery Pierron then. Now he's up by just two hundredths of a second. This is unbelievable. Avery Pierron. Is it going to be three out of three for him? Look at that time! Piron does it by half a second! Can you believe what we just saw? I took the win in four years, Leo Gang. That was not the tracks I liked it the most. On the air, I, like, I really liked the track, so I really wanted to win this one. I'm just super happy. So. It would appear that success in the world of DH requires trading the concept of better to be safe than sorry for the idea that it's better to be sorry than safe. Commitment in the world of XC racing, however, manifests itself in entirely different forms. Cross-country racing takes a lot of commitment. Racing at this level is all about having the right lifestyle. It's actually one of the toughest sports I've ever seen. Especially now that I know what it takes to be at the top, you know, it's insane. People like me and 99% of the people in the world can't do that. Because it takes too much of commitment, passion and pain. All of the work that you put into leading into an event is the groundwork. That's the foundation, that's the really, that's the hard part. Round four gets underway, then it's gonna be a furious and fast start. <laughs> Contact there. Is this Langbad pulling out? So perhaps a crash we didn't see. Yeah. Everything we do turns around training, racing, traveling, resting, getting all those very important factors into your life. Pauline Ferran Provo is leading Yolanda Neff. Emily Batty and Maya Wojtowska all in that leading pack at the moment. 
to race at the level I'm at, I know the sacrifices I have to make and I have to be somewhere where I can train on the bike for anywhere from two to six hours a day and be climbing. Like I need to be gaining like 1,500 to 2,000 meters a day. Hmm, that sure sounds like a lot, right? Yeah. 2,000 meters per day times six days a week equals 12 kilometers straight up every seven days. The equivalent of a weekly visit to the stratosphere. Side note. Commercial passenger jets fly in the lower stratosphere, and unlike the troposphere where you and I like to hang out, it actually gets warmer the higher up you go. Oh, cool. But enough science. Back to the suffering. It's a huge lifestyle commitment, and it takes a lot of support and a lot of dedication. I've had to really learn how to say no to things that drain my physical energy and mental energy as well, and really look out for yourself heading into big events. Okay, Courtney there in seventh. That's impressive. She's actually had a knee injury and had to take a few weeks off the bike. You need to cut every single risk of getting sick, especially if your immune system is not the best one, like I, I have, for example. Here comes Maya, number six on the outside. It seems to be she's getting stronger during the race. So Maya Wojtowska looking good there at the front now. Look how much time she's pulled out. The 2010 winner on this course, Maja Wojtowska. That is definitely an attack. She's gone a lap early. And everyone fighting to go with her, all up out of the saddles there. I haven't really experienced normal life because the sport consumes you day in, day out. Like, it's so intense. But on the other hand, we can live our passion, and that's the best reward that you can uh, have. That is a good gap that Mara Wojtowska has opened up. No way. Look at this, though, Emily Batty. Looking like she's going to try and get across this gap now. Batty not so far behind, though. Will it be enough for the win? Mara Wojtowska. Is gonna take the win here in Val de Sole. No woman still has won here twice. It's her first win since 2012. Second is gonna be Emily Batty. She gave it her all on that last lap, but couldn't quite close that gap. It was definitely a really solid race for me. I kind of had to play a different tactic today. The goal was to burn as few matches as possible, so I raced a little more conservatively at the beginning. Bar to bar, and it looks like Kate Corney has got the legs on this final straight. Focused on really finishing strong, and I want to sprint finish. It's really cool thing to win a sprint out of at the end of a long race. It shows that you really, really fought for it and didn't give up. So let's recap, shall we? Here in Italy, we've learned that the good things are hard. And that the hard things are good. We've ascertained that Kate and Finn are both capable of delivering on our high expectations for them. And maybe most importantly, we've discovered that none of the top athletes on the World Cup circuit have commitment issues. Hey guys, I'm Finales, professional mountain biker. Thanks for watching Red Bull Bike. Click here to subscribe and watch more awesome videos. Perfect. Oh my god! Come out. How you can be